There's something about baseball on the radio. Gentleman ready. Looks at third. Delivers. Change up. Line drive. Baseman. He has done it again. The Orioles have won it. They have taken four from the Brewers. Can you believe it? Listen to Memorial Stadium. Fly ball. Well hit. Deep in the gap. Left center field is going to be in there for the base hit. It's a tying run home. Cal Ripken is heading to third base. More crowding the plate. Here's the pitch to him. Fastball grounded deep into the hole at short. Lee's got it. Throws the ball to third, and they've got Chris Sabo at third. What a magnificent play by Manuel Lee. John Miller, Chuck Thompson, and Fred Manfra do Orioles radio play-by-play. Over the next half hour, you'll hear the three tell stories about themselves and explain how they approach the job. Miller explains why baseball is such a great sport for radio. Manfred takes us behind the microphones on how he prepares for part of the job, and Thompson talks about some of the difficulties in doing baseball play-by-play. Of course, any conversation with Chuck Thompson wouldn't be complete without some mention of a Hall of Fame career. And with Miller, it's the tales he tells. Oftentimes, they're hilarious. Fred Manfred grew up in Baltimore, a big fan of the Orioles. He shares some special moments, including last year's highlight. Orioles play-by-play. The men behind the mics continues after these words. I'm talking baseball. Gentile and John Orsino. Oriole baseball. Hoyt and Aparicio. The Kitty Core. Triandos. Billy Lowe. of your nearest Duran store. Complimenting the boss on his tie. That was a smart move, Jake. And the way you fawned over his every statement, Smythe. Smart move. Yeah. So, Fred, when are you going to do something smart? Yeah, Fred, when? Well, uh, I upgraded from 123 for DOS to Lotus Smart Suite. <laughs> you call that a smart move? 123 release 4 for Windows plus 4 business applications. Yeah, I'd say it's a smart move. Sure, but what are the other applications, huh? Well, you get OmniPro Word Processor, Freelance Graphics, Approach Database, and Organizer Personal Information Manager. Oh, yeah, yeah. We probably got ripped off. Uh, no, not with Lotus Smart Suite. I got all five great applications for the price you'd expect to pay for one or two. Whoa. Actually, Fred, that sounds like a very smart move. Have I told you how much I love that tie? And where did you get that tie clip? Lovely. Thanks, fellas. It's a smart move to upgrade to Lotus Smart Suite at Egghead. Smart Suite includes one, two, three, plus four more top Lotus Windows applications, all together for a great upgrade price. Get 10% off. That's double Q savings on Lotus Smart Suite at Egghead Software. In Washington, people disagree on all sorts of things. Mostly, it's about politics. But it's hard to disagree about John Miller. Just mention his name to an Orioles fan, and they mainly just smile, then break into a broad grin, and then fill you in on their favorite John Miller story. John just has a way about him. When you're least expecting it, he says something which makes you laugh. John Miller back in uh, St. Petersburg, which uh, Al Lang Stadium now belongs to the Seagulls, who descend each afternoon here from the Tampa Bay onto the uh, the remnants of what the folks have left here at Al Lang Stadium. Fred and I like to just sit here sometimes for hours watching the Seagulls going about their business, cleaning up the ballpark. You don't see that much when you get to the Astrodome, places like that. Fred Manfra, beginning his second season with the O's, says he loves working with John. Uh, you know, uh, working with John is it's not like working with an ordinary play-by-play partner. Uh, with John, as you say, 
he can come in with a uh, funny line. Uh, he comes in with something that would lead you into a funny situation. So you have to be uh, very aware of what's going on. Uh, working with John, though, has, uh, as we have gotten used to each other, has gotten easier and easier. And it's truly a pleasure to go into the broadcast booth because you really never know what to expect. And Miller says sometimes he just can't believe his own good fortune. I mean, think about it. I, I have a job where I go to the ballpark every night, uh, a job that I wanted since I was 10 years old. And I got the job. I love the job. I get paid well for the job. And... I feel like a guy who all these years has not had to work. Miller began doing radio play-by-play -play with the Oakland A's in 1974. Along the way, he's worked for the Texas Rangers, the Boston Red Sox, and in 1983 began his first season with the Orioles. He begins each broadcast with, Good evening, Orioles fans, wherever you may be. Something he does because of radio's reach. If you're in the car heading somewhere, you've got the radio... Uh, you could be out uh, on a camping trip and you have the radio. Uh, you could be at the beach and you have the radio. No matter where you are, the radio can go with you. Uh, I, I've gotten letters from people listening to T.O.P., in fact, mm -hmm. uh, from as far away as uh, uh, New Brunswick uh, in, in Canada. Mm -hmm. People uh, staying at a, at a little fishing uh, lodge on, on some river up there in the in the great white north if john miller is a treasure to cherish for all orioles fans chuck thompson may be the epitome of a legend he was inducted into the baseball hall of fame last year and says he had no clue he was so revered by orioles fans uh, I, I must say quite frankly that all of the years uh, that i've spent as a, as a baseball broadcaster was not until last year and the mail started to arrive after the hall of fame announcement that I recognize fully what an impact the play-by-play -play broadcaster has in his community. And uh, it, it really, really uh, staggered me. I had no idea that people who listened to baseball broadcasts were quite that intent and had the feelings that they had. And it was, a, uh, it was something that made me feel very, very proud, but also very humble at the same time that I've been able to do, you know, Major League Baseball broadcasting in parts of six decades and, uh, you know, you hear from people, uh, one man said, started to listen to you when I was 15 years old and enjoyed it, so on and so forth, and went on to say, I'm proud to say I now have a son. He is 15 years old, and he also is a Chuck Thompson listener. Things of that sort uh, kind of staggered me. I wasn't aware, really, I think, too much, Paul, of what happened after I said something into that microphone. Fred Manfra is the new guy on the block, and he says last year's highlight was just being in the booth with his boyhood hero, Chuck Thompson. Chuck uh, permitted me, and I, I feel it was a, a, a great honor to be able to do so, to read some of the letters that fans would write to Chuck congratulating him about his Hall of Fame status. And it was quite an impact to read the part that a baseball play-by-play -play announcer plays in people's lives. Uh, when you think about it, you visit with people every day for six months. And not too many other sports broadcasters can say that. In the NFL, you come in on a Sunday afternoon, college football a Saturday afternoon for a short period. But in baseball, permit you, uh, people permit you to come to their barbecues, to their pool parties, to go sailing with them on the bay. And you become more of a friend than a broadcaster. When we return, John, Chuck, and Fred talk about the art of doing radio play-by-play. Remember this name, Western Termite and Pest Control. Because chances are, when you do discover termites, carpenter ants, roaches, mice, or other pests, you'll be so anxious to get rid of them, you might call almost anyone. Western Termite and Pest Control can satisfy your very important concerns. Who will they send to my home? What kind of training does that person have? Will they use the right treatment for my specific problem? Remember Western today, and you can act with confidence when pests attack. Western will inspect your home, respect your home, and protect your home. With local offices near you, Western is just a phone call away. Check your yellow pages and call Western today for a free inspection. If you do need service, Western will give you $25 off an annual plan and your money back if you're not satisfied. Call today, Western Termite and Pest Control. Caring people offering careful solutions. Careful solutions for your home and your business, too. Western is not a franchise. They've been family-owned and operated since 1928.
I don't know about you, but there are months that I need to use every dollar in my personal checking account. But at most banks, you have to maintain a minimum balance of $500, $1,000, or even $1,500. If you don't, you get hit with a service charge. That's why I switched to absolutely, positively free checking at Columbia First Bank. There's no minimum monthly balance requirement, so I can use all of my money whenever I want to. But with no balance requirement, you'd expect to be charged a hefty monthly service fee, right? After all, some banks charge up to $10 if your balance goes below their minimum for just one day. Not at Columbia First. Their free checking account is just that. It's free. There's no monthly maintenance fee, regardless of my balance level. Check out absolutely, positively free checking at any of Columbia First 31 offices in the District, Maryland, and Virginia. Because you have more important things to spend your money on than a checking account. Columbia First Bank. Member FDIC. John Miller says radio play-by-play -play doesn't have to be as detailed as it used to be. Because with television, fans have been able to visit every ballpark visually. And for the most part, they're familiar with all the quirks. I, I once years ago heard a tape of uh, the 1936 World Series, the third game of the World Series. And uh, the Red Barber was about 27 years old, did the middle three innings. And there were these veteran broadcasts, a guy named Ty Tyson and a guy named Tom Manning. And the three of them, I mean, they described everything exhaustively. You know, like Red Barber was there and he'd... Uh, now the uh, umpire wants to look at that baseball, so uh, Hadley uh, tosses it into his uh, catcher. Catcher turns around and hands it to the umpire, Major Kurth, and now he rubs up the ball. Meanwhile, DiMaggio, the batter, is a uh, dirt picker upper, and he reaches down with his right hand, grabs a handful of dirt, uh, <laughs> rubs it between his hands. Now he uh, drops it uh, again to the ground, uh, picks up that bat right down by the handle, uh, sets himself in the box. Uh, the uh, catcher throws out the new ball to the pitcher. Uh, Hadley's got it, you know. <laughs> wow, all we've had is the pitcher toss in the ball, and... Uh, and so I heard this, and I was, I was astounded, but I also was fascinated because, you know, I wasn't even alive in 1936, and uh, it was a great era in baseball. There were great stories. I mean, this one game alone, there was Mel Ott for the Giants, and Lou Gehrig hit a home run, and there's DiMaggio, and all these, these great stars, great names, legendary names. And, and I wanted to know. I wanted to have that feeling of what it was like to be in Yankee Stadium in 1936. And they described everything to, in such great detail. I felt like I was, uh, and, and and it hit me like that. That is what radio is all about. Now, we don't need that same level of, uh, uh, you know, picture painting nowadays. People have seen pictures of the ballparks. They have television. They've been to these ballparks. Uh, you know, that same level of uh, description would would drive you nuts after you know ten minutes. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, but there are those moments in, in, in every game, and they can happen any time, but particularly in tight games near the end, where not only can you not go wrong by just describing everything you see out there, but it's wrong not to. Describing some plays can be tough, as Chuck Thompson found out early in his career, which began in 1939. For me, one of the things that I found very difficult for quite a few years was to describe a triple play. And... Uh, I somehow always wound up with only two out, and it, it took a little while to, to figure out what I had to do to get to the triple play. It's something that's almost impossible to describe instantaneously as it happens. You're going to be just a trifle late, but not that difficult now. Uh, there really isn't uh, that amount of difficulty. It's a matter of one of the things about baseball is the fact that you have a chance to use something that I think listeners enjoy, and that's a little bit of silence. Uh, and uh, the pace and the tempo of the play-by-play -play man, if he is doing his job, is he, you know, the game has a, a very pronounced tempo and a sway and an ebb and a flow, and you try to, you know, make the listener aware of that. John Miller says he has an obligation to the fan listening to the game on the radio. It's not just the home team. It's not my job only to get excited because the Orioles did well. And my job is to, to try and give a complete, vivid account of what's happening but also the feeling, to give you a feel for what it's like to be there. Mm -hmm. And, of course, nothing does that better than to let the crowd roar. You know, mm -hmm. guy hits a home run, just say, and it's gone. And then just pull back and let the crowd go nuts. Uh, because I think that puts you right in the ballpark, the roar of the crowd. And I, and I think uh, that probably it's the roar of the crowd that draws us to baseball anyway, or any sport. 
Fred Manfred says when he's doing play-by-play, -play, he's describing the game with someone in mind. John and I have talked about this, and uh, I try to focus on one person that I would like to be talking to at the time and uh, telling them what is going on at the ballpark. Maybe I'll think about my dad who lives in Baltimore and I know who's listening, or maybe my wife who uh, moved from New Jersey mid-season last year to Falston, and that's how I'll try to do it. When we return, John, Chuck, and Fred talk more about radio play-by-play, -play, and we'll get the story behind this famous expression. And now this is Chuck Thompson for Bill O'Donnell and Charlie Ekman saying, Ain't a beer cold, baby! <laughs> If you're near or have astigmatism, you can wear glasses. Put them on, take them off, put them on. You can wear contacts. Put them in, take them out, clean them up, put them in. Or you can wear nothing. Put them... Hey! More than one million individuals enjoy life without glasses or contacts thanks to a simple, safe outpatient procedure called radial keratotomy. Radial... RK. Metropolitan Vision Services will send you important information about RK and can schedule a complimentary RK evaluation. So... If you want to know more about a real alternative to put them on, take them off, or put them in, take them out, clean them up, call Metropolitan Vision Services at 703-941-0404. 703-941-0404. And ask about RK, the choice that can open your eyes to life without glasses or contact lenses. RK. Okay. Call 703-941-0404. Metropolitan Vision Services. We're changing the way you see the world. Instead of going to Heckinger's Spring Sale, my neighbor, Mr. Pay Someone to Groom His Lawn, got the turf surgeon this year. So instead of saving 10% this weekend on thousands of things like Scott's four-step lawn program and all crabgrass preventer, he pays some guy to walk around hosing stuff all over his yard. Heck, for all I know, he's painting the lawn green. In which case, the Heckinger Spring Sale is still saving plenty, because all one gallon Martin Cena of Bright Life and Great Life paints are 10% off, too. Of course, Mr. Spend His Life Savings on it yard wouldn't know that just like you wouldn't know all mulch all outdoor growing stock all scott's grass seeds and home light string trimmers are 10 percent off saturday through monday only no mr too much disposable income just doesn't care that those and thousands of other items are 10 percent off he'll just keep getting his weekly visits from mr spray his way to the bank guy save 10 percent on thousands of items and look for great brand names like wells lamont gardena spectrum and kvb hans brinker at heckinger and heckinger home projects Center Saturday through Monday, April 4th. Welcome back to Orioles Radio Play by Play, the men behind the mics. When you leave your job every day, you likely leave it all behind, but not John and Fred. When they leave the ballpark, frequently the radio dial is spinning as they're trying to catch another game. Yeah, I do. As a matter of fact, I have a 40-minute ride from uh, the ballpark to my home up in Falston. So as I'm driving home, I'll be tuning around the AM dial, trying to pull in WJR from Detroit, uh, WFAN from New York, maybe WABC, depending on the time sequence, whether the Yankees are on the West Coast, the Tigers are on the West Coast. And I often, yes, listen to, to see how other guys do their thing and how they set up certain situations. Miller says he's not as interested interested in style as much as he's trying to pick up information to use in later broadcasts. He says information is king. You know, I, I read uh, eight or nine newspapers a day. I, I mean, I check the sports sections every day uh, because I want to know what's happening in other cities and, and anything I can get my hands on uh, because uh, there might be good stories, there might be a, a controversy somewhere else. And all of that ties into the Orioles game, because they're going to be playing that team uh, uh, down the road or, or whatever. Chuck Thompson says game preparation gets easier and easier as years go by. My, my policy is to get there about 5. I, I, oh, in the old days, I used to get there about 5 o'clock in the afternoon, check in to the dugout, talk with the managers a little bit, and then go on up and do my work. Today, I don't have to do that, because whatever the manager has to say has already been said to the public relations department. The public relations department now has it written out for you when you get there. So I go, usually go right up to the booth, and uh, uh, the first guy I sit down with uh, probably would be Rex Barney, and uh, Rex goes down and gets the lineups, you know, about 3 or 3.30 in the afternoon. If there is anything of interest that he has found out, he usually brings it up, and we talk about it a little bit. And uh, for the most part, it's, then it's just a matter of preparing your scorecard once you get the lineups, and... Uh, 
and go from there. John Miller says he doesn't think too much about great calls, but he does think about the bad ones. John says the bad ones stick with him. However, not long ago, Miller says he did one game, which was jam-packed with action and drama. The next day, columnist George Will told him it was the best baseball broadcast he'd ever heard. A few months ago, when it was especially cold and dismal outside, I, uh, I, I popped it in the recorder late one night just to, uh, to remember what it was like when it was warm out. And, yeah. uh, but I listened to it for, you know, 15, 20 minutes and didn't think it was that great, so <laughs> I was, I was kind of disheartened, you know, so I, I, I quit listening. Uh. <laughs> Most fans will tell you hearing the manager's show with Johnny Oates is imperative if you want to stay informed. That job falls on Fred's shoulders. John and I, uh, as I said, we get to the ballpark early. So oftentimes, I will sit in the clubhouse with John and we'll discuss things. Or we'll sit out in the stands. If it's a nice day, we'll go out by the dugout and pull up a couple of chairs and take some sun. And then just start talking about baseball. Uh, John and I do it as a free-form show. Once the tape starts rolling, it doesn't stop. And... Uh, I will ask him, hopefully, the questions that fans would like to know. Uh, and uh, John has uh, said, ask me any question. I don't have to answer it, but you can ask it, and I won't feel any less about you. So that's the way it works. John Miller says he loves to do radio because with each team comes something new. Teams and ballparks have their own quirks. Well, they know when they're uh, in, in the Metrodome. The guy's going to break their bats and hit doubles. Uh, Kirby Puckett's going to check his swing, and he's going to single the right, knock in two runs. Uh, mm -hmm. And somebody's going to lose a fly ball on the, against the dome, and, and, and so on and so forth. And, and that's part of the, the fun, because people care about the Orioles. It's their ball club. And, and to be able to, to go with them via the radio, where, where we try to make these things, uh, the, the, the nuances of the ballpark is very vivid. I think it is, is part of the fun of it. That's why baseball is a great radio sport. Coming up next, John, Chuck, and Fred tell some stories. I'm going to the place where baseball lives. Ruth and Cobb and Joe DiMaggio. Sunny days and winter. Is loss of bladder control a concern? Select Dignity Plus, the superior alternative to pads or liners alone. Because it is a pant and pad system with a moisture-proof pouch and super-absorbent liners, it offers an additional level of protection and security. Feel good about yourself again in fashionably designed Lady Dignity Plus panties for women or Sir Dignity Plus briefs for men. Combine that with Dignity Plus super-absorbent liners and you have discreet, secure protection 24 hours a day. Dignity Plus is not like other products on the market. No one will ever know you're wearing them. Manufacturer mail-in rebates valued to $5 are also available at most locations. Dignity Plus, more protection than just a pad alone. Available at giant discount drugs and better home health care suppliers. Have you just been turned down for a credit card, a mortgage, a car loan, or even an apartment? Did this have something to do with you having some sort of negative credit rating? These negatives on your credit reports do not necessarily have to be your fault, but it's still a nightmare. Maybe you just got divorced and your spouse just buried you with his or her bills, not yours. Did you ever try to explain it? Does red tape ring a bell? How about when you lost your wallet or your purse was stolen and you just paid for someone else's Christmas? You can recover from the bills, but what about your credit? It's ruined, fried, destroyed, until you call Second Chance Financial, the only people who are trained to deal with the credit reporting agencies for you. Get your credit cards back today. You have rights under the law. You can have perfect credit again. It's safe, simple, and proven. Just call today, 1-800-640-5151. Get your credit back now. Trained credit advisors are standing by. Just call toll-free, 1-800-640-5151.
Chuck Thompson is known for two expressions, and although they may be near and dear to Orioles fans' hearts, they're no longer in the Hall of Famer's bag of tricks. And now this is Chuck Thompson for Bill O'Donnell and Charlie Eckman saying, ain't the beer cold, baby? Uh, it came from a buddy of mine that used to work with me in football. He was a, a spotter and lived down the end of the street with me as a guy from down in Philippi, West Virginia and a red-hot Colt fan, fan by the name of Bob Robertson. And when things were going good with the Colts in football, he'd kind of jump up on the booth and rub his hands together and say to me, ain't that beer cold? And I I kind of, you know, liked it. It, it. it entertained me, and I thought perhaps if I used it, you know, it wouldn't uh, hurt too much. But the other, both of those expressions, of course, have long since uh, gone for, for what I think are obvious reasons. Number one, uh, ain't the beer cold? I got mail from people down in an area that sometimes has been referred to as the Bible Belt. And uh, they wrote and said that it's bad enough they have to put up with beer commercials, let alone my ad lib references to beer. I thought they had a valid point. And uh, so I, I, I just dropped that. And the other, uh, uh, go to war, Miss Agnes. Uh, I got that from a guy I used to play golf with. He thought he was a great putter. He was a very devout guy, never used any bad language. And when he missed a putt, he'd say the same thing. Go to war, Miss Agnes. Fred Manfred is the hometown boy, and he says one Oriole memory is etched in his mind. My dad promised to take me to the ball game, and I we normally would sit in the upper deck because we couldn't afford box seats. Well, this one Saturday afternoon, somehow my dad came up with box seats to a ball game. And uh, I, I thought this was fantastic because I was leaning to the fence. I was able to watch the players and hear what they had to say. And we sat down during the ball game, and I started talking to a, a lady sitting next to me and saying how much of an Orioles fan I was and how I, I, I live and die with the Orioles. And she smiled, and she said, well, my husband plays for the Orioles. I said, really? Are you kidding me? She said, no, my husband's Jim Busby, and he was an outfielder. And she said, would you like to meet him? I, and, you know, my heart started racing. I said, meet him? Yes, ma'am, I would certainly love to meet him. Well, after the ball game, she took me down, and I shook hands with Jim Busby. And uh, I didn't want to wash my hand for a week after that. I thought that was a great thrill. And, of course, this broadcast would not be complete without John impersonating one of his favorite public address announcers, Bob Casey of Minnesota. You know, he always sounds like he's, he's, he's ticked off. You know, I mean, the very first words he always says... Uh, where he's just welcoming people to the ballpark. It's incredible because the organist has been playing usually for about 15 minutes, a guy named Ronnie Newman. Now, he, Ronnie Newman's been there since I've been going there for, uh, you know, 20, 21 years ago. Right. And he plays all these songs. He sort of plays them like a double speed or something. I guess he feels like he can get more songs in that way in the allotted <laughs> time. And, and it's crazy, you know, they're just... <laughs> and then when he stops, Bob Casey comes on the PA system, and for the first time, and, and his first word is always... Thank you! <laughs> and I finally realized what the thank you meant. You know, like, thank you for stop playing, you idiot. You're giving me a headache for you. Casey is fodder for John's storytelling ability. You'll have to forgive my obnoxious laugh. Here's more. You know, the amazing thing is that he comes on and he says, uh, you know, Welcome to the Metrodome. Here are tonight's starting lineups. Now write them down or you'll be shot! <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty emphatic about it, uh, uh, ironically, apparently, it is pretty good for program sales. You know, a lot of people take him seriously, and they, you know, they're just give me, give me a program fast, for God's sake. But uh, uh, you know, a true story about him. Uh, uh, many years ago, twenty something years ago, the Red Sox were at the old Metropolitan Stadium, and they had a bomb scare, and the uh, the authorities decided to take it seriously, and so they went up to. Uh, the public address booth, and they wanted to evacuate everyone from the stadium. Well, they checked for this bomb. It's right in the middle of a ball game. And so Bob Casey is the PA man, and they say, you know, we got to make sure nobody panics, Bob. you got to handle this just right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know just how to handle it. Leave it to me. <laughs> so he goes on the PA system. He says, ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. You're going to have to evacuate Metropolitan Stadium. Please leave in a quiet, orderly fashion. And don't panic, but there's a bomb! And if there is a dream call for the 94 season, John has it, impersonating PA announcer Rex Barney. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Oriole Park at Camden Yards for Game 1 of the 1994 World Series. Thank you. 
And then everybody, you know, goes... Stay tuned for Orioles baseball right here on WTOP following CBS News. It's 1 o'clock.